I uploaded a video to both YouTube and BitChute almost simultaneously, as I usually do. And I'm doing this as an experiment for myself to see how my 910 subscribers, well, it'll be 909 or 908 by the time I upload this video on YouTube, compare with my 10 subscribers on BitChute. And the video I'm referring to is called Tyranny of the Popular. And Tyranny of the Popular got zero views on YouTube. Zero views. 900 subscribers, zero views. It's, statistically, that's impossible. So it's been completely blocked off. They don't want anybody hearing this information, and why not? What are they so scared of? If just because something isn't profitable, you throw it away and you, you violate people's freedom of speech, you throw it in the trash, it would be okay. You could say, well, this is our server and this is our, and we can do what we want. You know, we have rights. There is some of that, but it, it gets to the point where you take it too far. And it does become an egregious violation of freedom of speech in this country where you can only go so far. You know, speech is protected under law. Under the, 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 it's the backbone of the law of our country. This is a powerful law. I don't think YouTube understands how powerful it is. So you have to have a damn good reason uh, to be able to block up somebody's speech like this. You don't have that good reason with me. You see examples of it all over the place now in the past since, I don't know, 2019 it really blew up. It's just getting worse and worse now in 2020 heading into 2021. I'd love to have one or more of these fact checkers give my content a role. But blocking anyone from seeing my videos and blocking my channel until someone actually has to type. You know, if you want to find my, my channel on YouTube, you've got to type H-E-Y-M-I-S-T-E-R-D-E-R. -E -E and right before you throw that last P, their search doesn't even know what the hell like somebody is looking for. They might just, you might not even appear at all. You might not even be able to, that'll be the next thing, you know, because they have all these different levels of censorship, all these different layers and, and levels of censorship. That'll be the next thing. You can't even find it. You know, they're not going to fact check Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Every time Joe Biden says the next stupid thing, every time Kamala Harris says the next blatantly false thing, uh, they're not going to be censored. They're just going to plaster their smegma all over YouTube. If it seems agreeable to their partisan politics, they're going to shout science. And then they're going to run behind the skirts of the government to, you know, so the government doesn't take a piece out of them. Big chunk of money. And they've got to please who can hurt them. So that's what's happening in, in the country today. You know, the government can, you know, go out with their big stick and threaten to spank the, the social media companies, and they've got to get in line and do what the government says at the behest of the corporations that are profitable, that are making, which is all YouTube cares about. I mean, at the end of the day, Google, f take a hike. Google Maps, Google Search, all these apps, whatever, get out of here. Yeah, I don't want your email. You're done. I can find something else. You know, but the politicians aren't experts. They're just popular. They can win elections. They can bullshit their way into winning elections and taking power over us. That's, that's what matters. You know, if I was saying what people wanted to hear on my channel, I'd be popular. And if I was popular, that's the one best attribute I could have as a, a content creator to get monetized on YouTube. YouTube reviewers wouldn't even look at my material so much. You know, that's secondary. They'd, they'd look at my subscribers and read my comments and think, well, you know, a lot of people sure seem to like this guy. And then they'd look at my content secondarily. And if, you know, they'd be a lot more flexible and forgiving to find advertisers with ads that they could run on my videos, even if it wasn't their cup of tea. You know, because profitability is the only tea they drink at the end of the day. You know, but my channel has become so anti-establishment the past couple of years. Well, I, I, actually, I didn't really even become active again until, I don't know, this year, whatever. So, but my mindset has been for sure for the past couple of years it's been far more anti-establishment than it's ever been before that they've taken the position that they're not going to let my channel grow anymore my chance of that has come and gone so lucky for me and too bad for them that i don't care my channel was never that big to begin with I, i'm not somebody who has 800,000 subscribers or 1.6 million subscribers or 3.8 million subscribers that they if they took me out then then that would be a big deal i might even get some press the only thing that Google cares about is money, and that's obvious. It's all that matters, and our freedoms are at the mercy of it. My freedom of speech, your freedom of speech, my freedom of expression, your freedom of expression is at the mercy of money. And our freedoms are being lost due to corporate policies 
of Google, corporate policies who take precedence over, who, that supersedes our freedom of speech, the First Amendment in the U.S. Constitution. And the tyranny of the popular video is case in point, that they totally block my video. There's no copyright violations, by the way. I was very careful of staying within the bounds of fair use. But that video more than any other, and there are, there's more evidence than just this. This is just one case study of evidence that I did show PewDiePie screaming white power. PewDiePie's content attracts children. PewDiePie's content is playing video games, and he's playing Minecraft. When he's creating his video, it, does he say that this content is for children? I hope not. But whether he does or not, you know, he's playing Minecraft. And I guess there are 17 and 18 and 19, 20, 25 and 30 year olds that are playing Minecraft. Okay, fair enough. And they're the ones that watch his, his content, his adult content. But nevertheless, his content is attractive to children. So there are 12 year olds and 13 year olds and 14 year olds and 8 and 9 and 10 year olds on YouTube watching PewDiePie play Minecraft and he's screaming white power. YouTube doesn't care. YouTube doesn't block him. He's their cash cow. PewDiePie is the biggest YouTuber on the planet Earth today. He's a cash cow. He's minting them money. They don't care about that. They don't have any genuine concern whatsoever about protecting your children, about protecting what your children hear and what your children don't hear. It's not about that. It's not about protecting them from racism. It's not about protecting them from seeing things that aren't child appropriate. They have no concern about that whatsoever because they block me. When I call this stuff out, they block me. They're not going to block him. They care about popularity, and they care about profitability, and that's all they care about. They care about money. They don't care about protecting your children. You look at the kind of content that PewDiePie puts out there. He's, got, he's building uh, sex machines out of blocks uh, of, of Minecraft, out of pixels, whatever you want to call them. He's got, got them sitting there. He's got a cow tied up in his dungeon in his basement or whatever, and he's you know just using a sex machine on them. Now, is that that's okay. That's okay, that didn't get banned or blocked or whatever. That's, there's eight-year-olds watching this stuff, okay? But I'm not allowed to, to, to penetrate this, this wall of cash that's flowing around. These, we're talking about millions of dollars at stake here. A little peon like me isn't allowed to challenge this. Well, you know what? A little peon like me is allowed to challenge this. I'm going to call them out. If you're going to block me, for asking questions, for broaching difficult subjects, for telling the truth, and you're going to block me because I bring the ugly truth, I bring the inconvenient truth, I bring the uncomfortable truth to the masses, and you're going to ban me? Well, then this is what's going to happen. Because I don't care how much dry powder do I need. How, many, how, much, <laughs> how much material do I have to sandbag? Because that's where it's going. I'm sandbagging. I'm keeping my powder dry. It's going into the warehouse. Uh, it's not. T it's not. Re I'm not ready to lock and load yet, but it it is coming. This is the ultimate place that all of this is headed for. It's headed for court. It's headed for class action. I have the capability and I have the resources to defend myself. And so, what better use of my resources is there going to be than that? The more YouTube makes me defend myself, the more offense that they put on me the more likely that this is all going to come down and happen. And I have no problem talking about it. I have no problem discussing the ins and outs and the problems with YouTube. It is the tyranny of the popular. If something is popular, it doesn't matter if it's good or bad. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. It doesn't matter if it's true or false. It's popular. CNN is popular. They're not fact-checking CNN. They're not banning CNN for all of the crap. There is a pyramid-sized volume of junk that CNN has uploaded on YouTube right now, and it's just falsity. It's, it's falsehood. It's dangerous falsehood. And it's just allowed to sit there and collect dust. Anybody can go back and watch videos from three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, six years ago, on the CNN channel. Same thing with all the other networks. It's just sitting out there. There's no attempt being made to protect pe people from this dishonesty. 
to protect people from this falsehood, that damage that's being done to people through spreading popular falsehood like that in the interests of profitability, that's what's damaging people. They're all a mixture. They all have truth mixed in with their falsehood, and they all have falsehood mixed in with their truth. It's only a matter... So that's not the determining factor. That doesn't decide the issue for Google or YouTube to decide what stays and what goes. That's You can't play that. It's proven false by way of all the other things that you allow. What's politically popular to you, what you feel as though is the best for your bottom line to allow to remain and best for your bottom line to allow to be booted and kicked out, that's where how you make your decisions. Right or wrong. It, it does, I'm not even saying that it's wrong, but it is what it is. And that's what it is. It's going to be wrong for me. It's going to be wrong for the little guy that people just have this compulsion to kick down, kick down on the little people, stick up for the establishment. You love doing that. You're brainwashed into doing that. That's not going to change. We're, I'm, you know, I'm always going to have the more popular I get, the more heat I'm going to take. The more people subscribe to me and listen to what I have to say, the more people are going to be kicking down on the top of my head. That's I don't care. I don't care at all. That's fine. The more of that, the better. That motivates me. I get more and more motivated. The more people try to kick, the more motivated I'm going to get. The more unpopular I become, the more I'm going to stick around and stay. Because that's what independence of thought is. That's what independence of mind is. If I'm the only one in a million people who thinks a certain way, that motivates me. That makes me think I'm doing something right. You a pootie pie supporter? You know, he's having a, a penis fight with his girlfriend. I guess that's okay too for eight-year-olds and nine-year-olds to watch on, on his channel. That's okay too. Oh, he's, he's just doing, he's product testing. I'm sure that my third grader, uh, that my third grade son is going to love watching that. Oh, dad, I'm a great father. I'm a great dad. I'm just going to let him watch that. Daddy, what's he doing? I'll just throw my parental responsibilities out the window too now and just let my son watch all that crap. And hell, you know, Google says it's okay. YouTube says it's okay. I'll let them make their money and I just, just sit here in compliance and silence and shut my mouth and just let YouTube have its way with me. That's not going to happen. It's more sand for the bags. It's more dry powder in the basement. Let's be clear. Google, YouTube, you don't stand up for truth over falsity. You don't stand up for right over wrong. You don't stand up for good over bad. You don't stand up to protect our children. You stand up for the tyranny of the popular because that is how you make your money. You care about profits. You have very little by way of goodwill and the goodwill that you do appear to have, it's keeping up appearances. You do it so that you look good. The good YouTube of old is gone. Welcome to the new YouTube. The old internet is gone. Welcome to the new internet. Welcome to the bad internet. Welcome to the tyranny of the popular.